everyone, I'm back with another project here, and I believe you might actually enjoy this one. This is what I got from a friend of mine. It is a NES, the classic video game console of the 1980s. And he just gave it to me because it just gave him some problems, so I get to open it up and take its guts out. So, let's just open it up. One thing I've noticed, actually two things I've noticed, is that these metal shields, not really sure why they put those in, but um, I really, yeah, I really don't see why. I mean, there's not really anything that is critical as far as timing is concerned or noise, signal, whatever. I guess just because they are having to comply to FCC standards, but whatever. Another thing is, is that this is one of the first consoles, or at least to I know, to my knowledge, the only console that has the spring cartridge loading system. It's where you just stick the cartridge in the slot, and the uh, pins back there in the back, you would press it down, and the cartridges PCB would connect with these pins, and thereby touching the... Uh, motherboard's PCB and connecting and read data off of it and load the game. But what we're really after here is the main components. It's because I've heard a lot of good stuff regarding the NES and since this is 1980s they had surface mount. There was, I mean they did not have surface mount. They had through hole components completely. And so here's the uh, main motherboard right here. And I'll just go ahead and zoom in and show you some of the uh, individual chips. All right, this first chip right here, that is the RP2A03G. That is the main CPU for the NES. And this was a 6502 um, variant and they, the company that made this, Ryko, Ryko, Ryko I believe, um, took out the 6502's binary coded decimal mode. I'm assuming that's some sort of addressing mode. I'm not quite sure what that meant, but who knows. Um, and accompanying with this chip is its brother, RP2CO2G, and this is another 6502 variant right here. And this was the picture processing unit, and it just held all and processed all the image data that would be sent out to your uh, TV. Everything else around the board are just various uh, logic chips. Uh, right here, this is a uh, 74LS139, and I'm assuming that's some sort of divider. Sounds like it. I have no idea what that chip does. No idea what that chip does. This one is a 74LS373, and that sounds like some... I believe it sounds like a latch chip of some sort. Something along the lines of that. Maybe, maybe it's something different. But this chip right here, this one is notorious to many gamers alike and many modders is that this is the regional lockout chip that came with the NES and this prevented you from playing unlicensed games and games that were outside of your region so since this is an NTSC so it's a North American NES you couldn't play say um, Japanese games or uh, European games, but you probably couldn't play European games in the first place. Actually, no. Yeah, you probably couldn't play European games in the first place because they worked on the PAL system, and I believe they had separate programming involved uh, for the game console, so it was incompatible with the NTSC. Or I may be wrong, and it was in the PAL system at PAL, the, the PAL, uh, the European game cartridges actually worked on the North American and Japanese versions. 
This chip right here is a 74HCU04A chip, and that sounds like some discrete logic chip just because of the low uh, number. So it sounds like a um, OR chip or a uh, XOR. No, not an XOR. Probably an OR chip. But I've never heard of this logic family, HCU. Never heard of that. I've heard of an HC logic family, but oh well. These two up here are 74HC368. I am not aware of their function, but they sound like maybe a counter chip of some sort. Just do their part number. Not aware of what the full function is. But everywhere scattered around the exterior are just past components that are used by the NES. And uh, one thing is, is that I can't wait to actually take these two off and use them because they're going to be really nice chips to actually just get used to uh, 6502 programming and just getting back to the uh, basics of how computers were programmed back then. But I'm going to have to find a RAM and a ROM chip that will accompany this because as were many processors of the time, there was no internal program memory. You had to load it up outside the... As I said earlier, you had to load the addressing memory outside the um, micro, the pro processor, and you did that with the 16 address pins right here. And so what you would do is that you would just have the ROM chip, it would be accessed by the processor right here and it would have the data bus right here and this processor had a 16-bit uh, address bus and an 8-bit data bus as with the uh, picture processing unit up here. And another thing that I really like about these two chips is that in the Nintendo included something really nice in these um, as you know, with most microcontrollers, I mean microprocessors back then, they had no peripheral support. It was just the processor, and that, that was all you had. You had to address everything else, memory, peripherals, everything else, using its addressing pins. But these two chips, Nintendo had a, um, when they ordered these chips, they had various timers uh, and tone generators built into the uh, silicon in these. So these two chips, I'm pretty sure that this one has it most and this one has at least one or two. These two chips had uh, multiple sound generators. Um, they had triangle wave. They had uh, pulse code modulation and several other mo um, sound generation modes which I found actually uh, quite useful, especially when I'm going to use these later on on some various other projects. But um, I just need to find a RAM and ROM chip again for this these two processors, and I uh, look forward to that. And I hope you enjoyed my video, and I shall see you later. And if you have any questions or comments, just post them at the bottom. I shall see you later. Thank you.